And we're live. We're live and alive. Hello everyone. 10 people in chat today. I'm guessing most of you come are coming from the Throw Up Club Discord. Okay, so this is the third day in a week we're streaming weird games in a row. Weird indie niche games. The good stuff. So last night we we played some Peripetea, which was an immersive sim. Now we're going the whole opposite way and we're gonna play a visual novel. Let me boot it up. And different from Peripetea, I have actually played this game before. So, whoa, okay, the screen's kind of janky. There we go. Perfect. Microphone playing twice. Oh no. Just audio. Okay, let me figure this out real quick. Okay, this should be better. I'm guessing it... I don't hear the mic twice, sounds fine to me. Mega Megalomaniac says howdy. Well, I'm just gonna cross my fingers and hope that the sound is alright. Okay, so throw up club. As you can hear, if you use your ears right now, the music is very cool. And we have the um, the musician in chat and the developer, Lolrats and Puki. Uh, please, I extend an invitation to check Wallred's channel, their music is pretty cool, their 3D animations are pretty cool too, which is something I've been trying for myself. So, let's, let's start the game. Enough with the chat, let's start with the game for real. <clears throat> Before you begin, this game is best experience alone in the evening with headphones on and the lights off. Okay, let me turn off the lights. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Gamer setting enabled. Choose a difficulty, violent, hyper violent or ultra violent. I'm ready to face violence, easy difficulty, resources are violent, enemies have less health. Hyper violent, I'm ready to face the world. Normal difficulty, resources are adequate, enemies are unchanged, and ultra violent. I'm ready to face myself. Um, the difficulty right now doesn't affect anything. Not that I have uh, seen, at least. Because this game is the first one in a series of 8 total discs. This is disc 0, the prologue. Without further ado, let's start. And the life said to her, are you scared of death? Then take, take my hand. I'll never let go.
a world of inconceivable actions, darkness, flesh, words, unfinished ideas, and the space between complete and sound thoughts. I found myself lost from beneath my own skin, falling. My body was staring away from the self, my consciousness. I felt my sense of touch and balance stretch below me into the dark, fleeing my eyes. I looked at my hands before me, but my sense of feeling with them extended far past their place in space. My sensations and nerves stretched like taffy, tingling and extending beyond any comfort. So we're going beyond the boundaries of senses of our own body. I could feel my body so far drifted from normality that it terrified me. The touch of a hundred thousand biting needles danced underneath the layers of my skin, across my accents. Creeping anxiety pushed, it, pushed its way into my heart and made me an unwelcome resident stinging me in my chest. Hello Hunter Stalker, nice seeing you again. I think you're gonna like this game. It's a visual novel uh, about a very mentally ill girl in a cyberpunk dystopia that's all based around medical terminology. But then she touched me. A soft, delicate hand on my face. I felt her warmth stay, stay the braiding needles, push, pushing their prodding to the cold blood stained refugees on her palm. The cold was dark, but the warmth was comforting, and the longer I stayed with my cheek to her hand, the warmer, warmer those spots became, and a more calm rush over my strange body. Those are always good, tonight I'm sticking on the long run. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for coming on by. I reach out with my hand whose senses had spring back into place. I place it upon her hand which softly shuddered against the cold of my own, but it did not stray. I could now I could I could see her now, a small frail girl with features obscured by the distortion of the world. Yet her expression was dire enough that I could tell how clearly worried she had become. Um, it begins very abstract, but as, as it goes on, the lore gets explained to us and the setting of the world, and it's very, very cool. It, it's very detailed. It goes into a lot of uh, granularity about how it works, how the uh, uh, people of the wor world operate, the organizations. You'll see soon, I don't want to spoil it. It was like looking upon a mirror of myself at the time, but seeing her fear did not make me fall. The world was terrifying, and it terrified her, too. We saw the same disgusting mess of a reality, and I knew I wasn't alone. I knew I wasn't, it wasn't just all in my head, and that fact gave me the only comfort I could possibly find here. Meh. <laughs> Surini shakes your shoulders and gives you your cheek a couple light slaps until you come to your senses. Get up! Snap out of it! Please! Are you okay? Keep holding on. I know it's hard. I understand. But I am here. And I'm going to be forever. Got it? <laughs> hey, Rig! And Revy. Hello guys. What's that emoji rig? Is that a, an angry face in the lube? <laughs> <coughs> Very nice. She helps you up into a sitting position. You found yourself with within a large elevator. Oh by the way, I I remember. He's washing his hands, yeah, he's just washing his hands. Cheeto fingers. Perfect explanation, yeah. Rig is being kind enough to drop by onto my stream this Friday. We're gonna play Dissolution ST together. So, if you wanna check it out on Friday, an interview with the developer of the world famous Dissolution franchise, <laughs> come by on Friday. It'll be fun. The two of you are alone. In fact, it feels almost as if the two of you are entirely alone even outside the confines of the elevator. 
You all right now? You were spiraling for, for a moment. Are your eyes acting up? Are your... Mine are too. Of course. And remember, if anyone gets too close to you, I'll kill them. If anything goes wrong, we run. I love you, okay? Here. Take this. Surini hands you several vials. Rick says, he has a cold right now, so my brain might be fried and my nose may be running. Well, that's kind of perfect for the type of game this solution is. Uh, having a fever while playing a, a bit of a fever dream game should only enhance the experience, right? This will get the job done. When this is all over, look for, for the room with a red door and a black hand. Got it. Actually, when I played the first dissolution, I was severely sleep deprived. I uh, actually discovered this drink, um, this Hong Kong drink, which is a mixture of black tea and coffee. I think it's called Young Young. If, you're, if you guys are ever in a pinch where you need a lot of caffeine, or you cannot go to the bathroom, you're constipated, I really recommend two-thirds black coffee, no, two-thirds black tea, very concentrated, and one shot of espresso. It's a fantastic pick-me-up. Not great for mental health, but great to get the uh, work done. And that was the condition on, on which I played this solution, and it was perfect. I enjoyed the game so much. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna focus on reading. That's right, have you decided yet, by the way? That's okay, go out whatever pace you want. I'll keep using nothing until you're ready. I'm sure whatever you choose will be beautiful. I'm sure she's talking about her name. Even if you can't speak to me after this, I'll be watching. Surine gently strokes your face with her thumb while her, her palm lies flush against the side of your cheek. <coughs> She, she releases her hand, wiping away a tear as it leaves. Reaching into her pocket, she pulls out a key before facing the elevator control panel. You hear her slot the key in and turn, but your face falls down into your hands. I know you can, but I won't let you. I'm doing this for your dream. Save yourself. For me. Please? Your dream. It's beautiful. Let me realize it for you. Let me realize it for you. Your fight is finally over. You feel your hands bright softly from your from your face, revealing Surin's close face and smile. She sits against the wall of the elevator and leans your body down into her lap. She shake he, she keeps one hand on the side of your face to keep you from hiding it away behind your palms. It's okay, Revy, you can go to sleep. The golden rule is, if you gotta sleep, go to sleep. You can watch the stream later or whatever, but you know, sleep is, it is very important. Unless you're playing this illusion. Surine, I, I wish we could stay like this forever. Just you and me. But we are unlucky, aren't we? If it was anyone else, they might have not had the strength to get here, though. But with you by my side, I can do anything. And I will. I have something for you. You look up to Tsurine, who opens her mouth and reaches deep inside. From within her throat, she pulls out a beautiful red flower. Something about its aura relaxes you. Looking at it feels familiar and comfortable. She gifts it to you and you cage it gently between your two hands. This one isn't for strength like the others. It's for love. It's something to remember. Gorgeous, isn't it? Just like the field of pink ones. Only more passionate, like it hasn't given in and lost its color. You open your mouth to speak while Surina hushes you and dismisses your thoughts with a gentle pat on the head. She already knows how much it means to you. Not a single word needs to be spoken. 
and we have arrived. <coughs> the elevator dings and comes to an abrupt stop. You've arrived at the eyes of the world. This is where I get off. I don't want to see you. I don't want you to see what I'm about to do. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Serena kisses you on the forehead and stands up, lifting you into a carry. She sets you down on your feet gently and then steps out of the elevator. Close the doors and repeat. I know that I'm gonna be fine. In your head until it's over, okay? Close the doors. You nod your head and close the elevator door. Surina closes her eyes and smiles happily back at you. You're alone in the elevator. Do you feel alone? I do, I don't, I don't know how to feel. I do. Leaning back against the elevator wall, you begin to chant in your head. I know that I'm gonna be fine. I know that I'm gonna be fine. I know that I'm gonna be fine. I'm not gonna be fine. I'm not gonna be fine. I'm not gonna be fine. Gonna be fine. The elevator, elevator walls begin to creak and fluids of many colors exude from the various holes and imperfections of the elevator. The sounds of squealing and bending remind you of someone in pain, as if the elevator itself is screaming for help or reprieve. The thick liquids pull at your feet and soak into your socks. A dense slime that clings to you like desperate hands. I know that I'm gonna be fine, I'll be okay. Some mind, some body. The fluid fills the room and you stroll to keep the flower above the growing pool. Eventually, your whole body is buried. And lastly, the flower you held high above your head succumbs to the fluid. Just ignore the slime, bro. <laughs> I just got in here what exactly is going on. Um, nightmare, 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 basically. If you ever lose your way, I will find you. Wake up. For as long as I can remember, the world has looked strange. The doctors say it's a condition called schizen, schizen, but I've never seen it in my size spec manual or the IDCP before. For as long as I remember. That's not very long. Not very long at all. Disc Zero waking up. Serena sometime later in the congenial ward. This is Pymat. She's waking up. <coughs> okay, I gotta make some voices. How's her vitals? Stable. Good. Let's give her a minute. It's been long enough. Administering 20 cc of sterpaphine. Whoa, whoa. Hey, lay back down. Serena leaned back down onto her bed with a look of drowsy confusion. She couldn't recall ever sitting up in the first place. Uh, classic anesthesia. Actually, quick break. Uh, I had shoulder surgery like a year ago and uh, I had to be put down under very intense anesthesia since um, because of the nature of the surgery I couldn't move at all or they also could touch like something they shouldn't touch. They actually hooked me, hooked me up into a machine called the Spider, where I basi basically became like a puppet, an unconscious puppet, and the doctors could manipulate me uh, to move my body so to their convenience, right? So I was put under very heavy anesthesia, and when I woke up, um, I couldn't feel my arm. They completely blocked off the sensation of my left arm, and when I woke up, I felt. My, what I then realized after a few minutes that were my fingers digging into my abdomen but I was so confused that I swore to god that I had two tubes coming out of my entrails and I started panicking my, my vitals went all crazy and uh, the nurses had to come to me because I, I, I got an anxiety attack I, I swore to god that some, something went wrong with my surgery and that I was hooked up uh, to some weird kind of machine. But, but no, I was just uh, under the effects of very heavy anesthesia. And then I said a bunch of random shit. I, I actually, once I was sober, I, I asked the nurses, did I say something weird? And she just looked at me and said, yes, you did. A lot. <laughs> 
She never told me what though. She said that whatever happens in recovery stays forever in recovery. So I'll, I'll guess her. I'll never know. But well, that was the lore drop for the moment. Anesthesia really is scary. It's not like sleeping at all. It's like brushing with death. <laughs> well, I'm chill. <laughs> Where am I? You just had abdominal surgery. Everything should come back to you soon enough. Elena toads over a bucket and places it upon your lap. What's that for? Mm. I'm headed home. You got it from here, Elena? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, see ya. Elena nodded. nodded. Mat <laughs> Elena nodded Paimat goodbye as she dug through a nearby stack of papers. Well, Surine, now that you're out, I have some questions for you. Can it wait a little longer? Um, it's still drowsy. I'm afraid not. Do you recall seeing the, signing the patient drug trial from before the surgery? I think so. Something, something about the discount? Yes, your anesthesia for today will be free. We use a newly released public drug called Codatin. It was extensively tested before market release, but we are still required to perform a small psych evaluation on patients for a few days. Surine mumbled sleepily. We are making sure that there is no lingering effects on patient mood after surgery, so... Uh, I'm sorry, but it has to be, to be done immediately after you wake up. So let's begin. Mm, fine. First, I'd like you to answer a couple of questions. On your plate is a marshmallow. Marshmallow, that's all you had to say. Or wait for Alina to finish talking. So this will determine how impulsive we are. We actually have a... I think we cannot access it right now, but we have a... A stat distribution, more or less like... I wanna compare it to this Galicium where our personality affects what will be the combat system and uh, various kinds of checks but it's still a demo so for now uh, let's just take a marshmallow you have me a marshmallow i immediately eat it all right next question <coughs> a train is traveling on a set of tracks that forks into directions you and a friend are tied to, s to two separate train tracks in each of the two directions. A switch to direct the train is within reach, but is currently in a neutral position. What do you do? Save friend, not touch the switch, or save ourselves? We're gonna be loyal, we're gonna save our friend. I switch, I switch to the lever to ensure that my friend lives while sacrificing myself. Almost done. I'll say both, easy. Yeah, just don't tie yourself. Easy peasy. You have a chronic pain and are down to your last few pain pills. Tell me your thoughts. Freak out, remain calm, or stay hopeful. Hope is a hell of a drug. So we're gonna take a massive amount of opium to deal with this. I'll take them as I need them, still I'm certain that I'll be able to get a hold of more in time and it would be bad if I cut down on my dosage. That's very reasonable actually, you don't want white rules to hit, hmm, but maybe, you know, if you run out then, okay, it's, maybe rationing is a more rational solution, but um, Cutting down on drugs can be dangerous. Okay, so picture a lighthouse surrounded by an endless pool. How does it make you feel? Isolated, but also full of mystery. I can imagine it clearly, but I'm not really feeling anything. Feel what? So, can we rotate the apple in our heads, or do we have a fantasia? Personally, personally, I can project the apple, I can taste the apple, I can smell the apple. I have full control of the imagery and senses in my mind. It's beyond a movie screen, it's a, there's an actual reality buried in my head. 
and it's full of apples. Contemplative, alone. Like I'm searching for a sign of life or carrying a world void of both, but filled to a brim with monsters just out of sight. Yes, that's right, I am absolutely apple peeled. I'm apple peeled and apple core maxing. Mysterious is the best stat. Always. That's it for the questions. I have no idea what is happening, but I drank a shitload of Indian rum and I'm up for whatever is happening. What's up, y'all? Yo, yo. Hey, Rage is a lot of work. What's up? We're playing this uh, very cool visual novel. Um, I think you're in the perfect state of mind to enjoy it, so hope you stay around. <clears throat> Next, I'm going, I'm going to give you several sets of two colors. I like for you to pick one color in each group. Blue or orange? That's hard. I like the blue because Virgil is blue, but I like orange because Kamina has orange glasses. But if I'm doing some math, I'm guessing I'm 90% Virgil and 10% Kamina. So I'm gonna go with blue. Blue. Purple or yellow? Ah, oh, jeez. All, all of these colors are, are great. I love neon colors. Neon purple, neon yellow. Sometimes I do wear them in real life, even though they're uh, quite... Um, what a, quite a sight. Mm, but uh, neon yellow is more... No, 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 neon purple. Dark. We go in dark. Dark and broody. Pink or green? Green. Easily. S cyan or crimson? I love deep, deep crimson colors. The deep red. Lastly, we have an x-ray test. I'm going to show you a series of x-rays and I want you to tell me what you see. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, what do you see, chat? Do you see two magicians fighting over a bow tie? A boss? Or a frog face staring at us? Personally, I wouldn't say magicians. I see more uh, of the, you know, the meme of the stick figures having a, a dance battle. And that's why I see personally. Yeah, two magicians. I see magicians the most too, yeah. Like two stick figures having a fight. Next image. Okay. They're presenting their hearts to each other, but out of options. Magicians. Two thumbs ups, antlers, or a crown. Personally, I do see a, a pair of antlers. Like, um, not the standard pair of antlers, but more like exotic um, African kind of antlers. Like the spinny kind, the, 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 the antlers that go in a spiral. Two thumbs up, that's a bit of a stretch because while I do see the hand in here, where's the rest of the arm? Like, it doesn't connect. It could be a, a laurel crown too, but I see antlers, personally. <laughs> Doom says, speaking of thumbs up, don't forget to like the stream. <laughs> Thank you, Doom. He's being based, as always. And speaking of Doom, don't forget to check out his channel. <laughs> because he's great, he's based, and he's a friend. Next image. Okay, this is quite different. A star, a giant crab god, or a mess? I do see the crab god. These are the, the pincers, and this is the shell, and the little legs. A star, it's a bit of a stretch for me, and a mess is just saying, like, whatever, it's a mess. So I'm gonna go with giant crab god. The crab god, god of crabs. That's a new one. Last image. An enemy crab? Okay, this looks out of the gate like a pair of ribs. A rib cage, a caduceus, or a chandelier. What do you see, guys? I immediately hopped into the rib cage. It's missing a few ribs, but that's okay. Though the caduceus. 
Mm, it could work, but but to me the snakes should be spinning around a bit more to make to give it a prop, proper form. Actually, if you look at it, it looks like V2 from Ul Ultra Kill, in a way. Like this is the wings, this is the head, and he's coming out to kill you. A red cage. Excellent. That's all for the questionnaire. I'm going to cross-reference your answers with the form you filled out before the operation. This'll just take a moment. Praise to the crab god. Alright, all done. Yep, seems like you're still the same Surina that walked in here earlier today. That's good news for Kodatin, huh? Tip Attributes. You can request a health report on Surine to monitor her 4 attributes and other stats by clicking on the heart icon on your lower right. Each attribute is an aspect of how you've been expressing yourself lately and is indicative of your current mood and mental state. Although how Surine is feeling in a given moment along with her attributes is subject to change and influence, her core character traits will always remain. Sorry, I'm getting a bit thirsty. <laughs> I'm getting a bit twisty. <clears throat> a lot of talking. Attributes dictate all of your combat stats and affect your ability to persuade and converse with various characters. The closer your attributes are match a characters, the easier it will be to persuade them. Additionally, by learning about a character's personality and current mood, you can make clever assumptions about their strengths and weaknesses in combat. These are based off trying to look at them in different ways, uh, the Roskart's test. Well, they were x-rays actually. Like the ones that alter seal is based on what I saw instantly, what I saw a little while after, and what I saw after looking for a while. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm. I was guessing it, it was trying to measure more your first impression, not your... Not the amount of thought, your of brain cycles you're spending at deciphering an image. Attributes have two sides, a low side and a high side, and swing to one end or the other depending on your choices. No attribute score is better than another, and your dialogue choices are never restricted or determined by your current scores. You can temporarily alter attributes by using medication, which is heavily advised for each major encounter and a key mechanic should you familiarize yourself with if you wish to succeed. Yeah, although... I had a pretty vivid nightmare while under. It almost felt real. And I wasn't even myself in it. Well, the team behaves differently from your standard anesthesia, so quirks are to be expected. We are hoping it'll prove to be a good alternative for patients who are non-responsive to standard anesthesia. Mm, sounds to me like it needs more testing. Perhaps some people with an outdated locum pink. Works fine for me. That's what they all say, till it corrodes their stuffing. Listen, if you combine our date and want me to hook you up, it'll, I'll make it easy and throw in a discount. Special deal, just cause I like you. I'll think about it. Okay, so Puki says, I tried my best, but it ended up working pretty well. Even if one is off, though, it'll change and correct itself as you play. Perfect. Alina disconnects your IV. You're free to go. Just make sure to collect all of your belongings. Surine begins to round up her possessions and Alina walks off for a moment before realizing she forgot something. Oh, hold on. I need to list the new abdominal stuffing on your body record. Would you mind handi handing it over? It'll just take a moment. Equipping items, you can open Surine's inventory by clicking the pill icon on the bottom right of your screen. And... Mm -hmm. Yep. Get creative or get scotched. Basically, we can equip items. You can only have one item equipped at a time, and equipping items in combat costs stamina. By clicking on, lastly, by clicking on an item while another is equipped, you can sometimes combine items into something new. I wonder if that'll be useful. Here's our body record. We equipped it, and we give it to her. Perfect. 
This will just take a moment. Malina slots your body record into a well-mounted terminal nearby, then returns it to you after a brief moment and some hasty typing. You're all set to go now, Tsurine. Make sure to stop by again soon for anything else you need. Thanks, Alina. Mm-hmm. Just be careful, alright? I will. Catch you later. Later, Tsurine. Tsurine stops herself from getting up. Oh, one more thing. You patched me up a while ago from a botched surgery. Mm-hmm. They didn't check your locum pink release. Careless. Thanks. You don't have to thank me each time you stop by, you know? It's been two years. Besides, Pymet's the one who checked it. Still... No prop. Now get out of here. I need this bed for the next patient. See ya. Surina gets up. I'll tell Mighty thanks for you too. Surina nods and then makes her way out of Alina's OR. And we... We are outside, into the wild, wild world. Surine steps out into the expanse of the congenial ward. The area is composed of linoleum and tile floors strained with dark smudges and yellow spots, while the walls mock that of a hospital long since repurposed into a general public space. A tall ceiling, the height of two stories reaches up to fill the non-existent sky, blocked by a glass awning above which there are only more buildings, like those which surround and flank the central dark walkway with a rubbery sticky surface which smelled of latex and chewed gum. Each building bore windows with a dim multicolored lights oozing through their panes. The area was decorated with art, signs and advertisements that fit the cold nature of the war. The area smelled of dried yet moist, crusty stains, crusty stains of bottled liquids Stuffing uses blood and a grating tinge of old fibers burned by electrical outlets. It was heavy, even though it didn't possess the copious moisture of natatoria, nor the fetid stench of Beacon Valley. Perhaps it's the very weight of the depression shared by these ward's inhabitants that made it so. This was a congenial ward. Nice roll, thank you. The home of Surine and many others within the clinic. It was a go-to ward for those who could only afford basic housing, those looking for work opportunities or those trying to stave off, stave off loneliness. Everyone here is shared a collective slump, but within each other they found catharsis. Surine felt a sense of calm wash over her as she stepped out into CW's smile atrium. Although it was sterile, sterile and cold, it faintly breathed a sense of nostalgia into her, like the feeling of warmth one gets from listening to a relatable, yet sad song. In contrast to the operating room, her anxieties took a back seat, and she was happier for it. Familiar sadness was better than screaming nervousness, after all. Yuffie said she'd be here. Surina set her back down on the floor and slumped against a wall near the operating room's entrance. What would you like to do? We can call Yuffie, we can wait patiently, or we can just do whatever and because we know she's on her way. I wanna call her though, wanna catch up. Surini pulls, pulls out her phone and dials Yuffie's digits. Hello! Haha, <laughs> get it? Hey Yuffie. Get it? Yeah, I get it. It's cause I'm yellow! Surine! Surine! I'm yellow! <laughs> yeah, it's dog time. Did you get it? It was really funny. So anyway... What's up, girlie? I'm on my way right now. Do you need to pick up anything for you on the way? Whoa, perfect cough. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm a pretty good coofer. I'm coofing in here. I got some coofing practice. <sighs> I'm actually really close by, so maybe we should get that thing together. Mm? Yeah. Yuffie. But if you like really, really ne need it right now, then I'll get it. Yuffie. Surine. <laughs> Your voice cracked. 
I I'm fine. I don't need anything. I was just wondering if you were still coming. Of course I was, Squiddy. See you soon. Yuffie hangs up. A tall girl in the distance barrels towards you with one arm up towards the roof, wagging a hello. Tentacles! Yuffie. Surini, Surini shot quickly into a stand, preparing stance, preparing for a potential grapple. <coughs> the look of worry was plastered onto her face. Show me! Down girl! Surina lifted the lower part of her shirt, revealing her tummy. Upon seeing it, Yuffie came to a screeching halt just feet away from Surino, narrowly avoiding a collision. Man, the yellow girl likes to glomp people. You guys know glomping? It's something that happened in anime expos where people just basically tackle themselves. They collided as a form of greeting. And if it sounds stupid, it's because it is. Anyways, she leaned over in a dramatic fashion, pressing an index finger against Surini's stomach and marveling at the squishy feel. What did you get? What did you get? I should let her figure it out, tell her. She poked my stitches, fuck! Smash. <laughs> oh no, Doom. Doom. Calm down. She's just a JPEG. Okay, should we be straightforward? Should we be tsundere? Or should we be in pain? I'll give you 5 seconds, chat. I'll let you decide this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Stitches it is. Surina tried to scream aloud but was held back by civil decency. Instead, her face crunched up and a small pathetic squeal broke free. <laughs> Yuffie didn't even notice. <laughs> okay, that was the, the flavor text option. Um, let's tell her. It, it's stuffing. Hmm? Abdominal stuffing? So it's like prosthetic innards? You really don't know. Yuffie blankly smiles. <laughs> she she gave us a fluoride stare. There is no way you haven't be, haven't seen stuffing before. Oh, I see people with it all the time. I just never knew what it was exactly. Cosmetic implants, biosthetics. There's a lot of stuff that could be called stuffing. Wait, don't you have stuffing in your side? Yeah. From when I was little, which means I don't remember a thing about it. Haha! <laughs> that sounds on par with you. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> the uh option seems very attractive. Um, it doesn't mean anything. You're kinda ditzy girl, or your childhood was sketchy. I don't wanna be passive. So these two options, I'm gonna discard them. Should we dig in into her childhood? That's insensitive. But it's also insensitive to call her kind. Well, no, she is kind of and She seems to know that she is kind of I'm curious. Her, so we're gonna ask about her childhood. Oh no, the music turned off. Um, your childhood was sketch, wasn't it? It's kind of sad, but I'm not, not too shocked that you need stuffing so early. Uh, uh, yeah? We never said a word about it, but the context clues make it seem pretty fucked. And Rivian asks you out every day at Sterling. I'll tell you another day, sound good? This afternoon's about us hanging. And burgers. Burgers? Yuffie nods enthusiastically. Burgers! I'm gonna take you to a burger joint. My favorite burger joint. And I'll pay for it. I'm gonna take you to my favorite burger, burger and pay for it. Oh my god. Yuffie winks cheek cheekily. I'm gonna wink into the mic. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> sorry if I burst in your ears right there. 
Are you shocked? Surprised? Flabbergasted, maybe? Flumox! <laughs> I just learned that word today. I've got credit, you know. Yuffie looks seriously offended. <gasps> she wags a finger at you. No, uh uh. It's my treat. But... Don't take this away from me! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she's hard to voice act. She's intense. Alright, alright. It's quite a bit early for dinner, though, isn't it? We have a few hours till most places open. Mm, you're right. Yuffie seemed utterly stumped. I guess we could fuck around the area a bit first. It's been a while since we hung out with you moving and all. Oh! Great idea! You lead, and I'll follow! <laughs> oh! I forgot to say! It's so good to see you again! We have so much to, to catch up on! Love you, bestie! Love you too! <laughs> Love you too, it's nice to see you again! Oh, who am I kidding? It honestly feels so damn great! That you're back in CW, even if it's just for today. Haha! <laughs> Sounds like you miss me a lot. Feelings mutual tentacles. Heart. Okay, enough mushy. Burger time. Explore time. Oh, that's right. Explore time, then burger time. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna catch up my breath for one second. Ah, Jesus Christ. Tip U phone. You can open up your U phone by clicking on the U icon on the bottom right. Your U phone can be used for many things calls, texts, photos, resources, and even a flashlight in dark areas. Lastly, if you're ever lost on where to go or what to do next, you can always check your U phone's notepad to view your current objective. Synapse. Not all possible choices are visible. Click on the Synapse button on the right to view choices that are not accessible from the world screen. You can also hide choices with this button to more easily interact with the world. With the world. Right clicking your mouse also toggles the Synapse. Yeah, it opens up here, you'll see. Okay, let's go. When faced with difficult decisions with seemingly no way out, use this button to survey your environment for other routes. So we can call someone, talk to Yuffie, or return. And it the game became a point and click. It's a sign for Alina's clinic where I had my abdominal surgery early. The sign says B52CW smile. The clinic is divided into nine wards, seven of which largely belong to Sanitoria, a collection of explored and inhabited rooms, two of which Sanitoria shares no wounds with. Cool beans, I was starting to think it was a virtual girlfriend simulator. No, 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 this is a point-and-click game proper. Wards are divided... Uh, there is a lot of text, we're gonna be reading a ton. But, um, yeah, we're gonna explore. Wards are divided into blocks with names, which are then divided into rooms and levels. Some rooms beyond Sanitoria are inhabited, yet outside the largest network of reliable people. And guarantee of safety... Dot dot dot. Cleanup crews make rounds in Sanitoria, so if you get scotched, you'll be found and patched up pretty quickly. Scotch seems to be a word for not death, but you know, getting physically fucked up. Getting beaten. But if you're even a couple rooms outside Sanitoria, it's anyone's guess you'll even get picked up at all. This sign tells us that we're in 50 second block of the congenial word named Smile. Okay, I'm checking chat for just a second, then it's blocking... Uh, there we go, that's perfect. Now you guys can read comfortably too. There we go. Professional streamer in the house. Okay, this sign tells us that we're in the fifth second block of the congenial world named Smile. Okay. There's a dark room past this window. Look inside. Here goes nothing. It's too dark to see and my flashlight's broken. I'll have to come check it out later. Return. Just 
no hint of incense within the air. Okay, I'm gonna save. Save record. Yes. Because I got worried there that I might might have gotten stuck. This door is more than locked, it's barricaded from the inside. What's this? Epimace Enlightenment. One of these loony idiopath shops, I bet. I'm gonna wait outside. Okay. Ooh, 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 I really like the design of this room. The candles, the purple. Surina steps into a small room, lit vibrantly with violet candles. Surina steps. <laughs> it smells of wax and overbearing incense that makes her cough. It reeks in here. A lady with shut eyes approaches with such small steps, obscured by her long, sleepy robes, that she might as well be floating. There she goes. Ah, Surine, welcome. I've been waiting for you to show up. Uh, be not afraid, I, Efime, saw you coming in a vision. I... Such are the powers of a white ideopath. I bet you're wondering how I know your name, given that you've never come here before. You read it on my name tag. I foresaw- Yeah, I read it on your name tag. I don't really believe in ideopathy? That's okay, Tsurine. You don't need to believe in it for it to work. This is no holistic nonsense. I just need to be willing to part with credits. Well, yes. But I assure you, Surine, your reading won't be anything like the others. You don't just say that to everyone? Oh, Mary, no. They get pedantic details about average life, work, love, health, you get it. That's all what I can infer from grazing at the great room, anyways. Oops. When it comes to pedantic people. But the great room does not sit idly by where you are concerned. Oh no no no. There is no seeking, simply just listening. It has a story it wants to tell about you, Srine. And for a mere 100 credit, I'll tell you what the story is. There it is. What a fraud. What is a great room? What even is the Great Room? I hear the name thrown around here and there, but I got no idea what it really is. Many claim it's the world beyond the Black Ball itself. No one truly knows though, not for sure at least. But if I can give you my own but I can give you my own account of it. Tsurina crosses her arms. Go for it. A place of power interwoven in between all of us reaching out further than what we can experience. That much is consistent between beliefs. One people can tap for answers, which take great ponderings to understand. Just like the great room itself that takes much consideration to grasp at. I'm kind of tired of every belief chucking their two creds about some magical place either outside the black wall, beneath the beans or where animals go when they die. The Church of Mary is preaching enough for all of Sanitoria. <clears throat> Beliefs are founded on faith. The black will leaves evidence. It has a truth that's obscure for the moment, but very real. There are many idiopaths far more powerful than I. Perhaps one will persuade you in your journey with something more grounded. Well, to begin with, what is an ideopath? I wanna hear your definition, cause it seems like everyone I speak with gives me a whole different answer. Someone who taps into what lies within the great room, looking for answers. There are two main kinds of ideopath, blacks and whites. <laughs> Black ideopaths investigate the strange sciences around great room phenomena or cut deals with shady figures within the clinic looking for more practical, dangerous gifts? White ideopaths look inward, rather than outward, for a connection with the great room. 
and they busted down sexual style. We're met with information and forethought to ponder over rather than physical substance. And how exactly do you look inward? By disconnecting our minds and bodies. Fuck, like, uh, literally? Epimail laughs. Goodness me! No. But some certainly do. Ah, uh, so... Drugs? Incense? <laughs> Mysterious incense? Wacky incense? Okay, so... How much money do we have? Can we pay for a session? 100 out of 144... Oh no, that's... That's expensive. But I do wanna know. I do wanna know. Alright, you've piqued my interest. You fork over 100 credit unhappily. A wise decision, Surine. Let's begin, shall we? Epimay snatched an eyedropper out from the colorful slurry atop a nearby table and then dropped the contents upon her tongue. Oh, she's dosing. She is dosing. Does the session involve spanking? Let's hope so. My mind is open. Yes. There are many stories being told about you. Effie May turns to you while her eyes remain shut. She reaches out with her fingers towards you and follows your position. They tell of... Two, two Tsurines choking each other. Teeth on skin, fingers in eyes. If you fought yourself, which would survive? Uh, that's... That's all the Great Room had to say today. It's strange. How much it wanted to say that was so little. They didn't ask for a safe word. I'm going to fight myself? Perhaps you'll have a great internal struggle? As if that's not a daily thing. That's hardly worth warning me about. Besides, you could say that to just about anyone and they'd be like, Oh wow, that's so me, for real, for real. It's incredibly generic and vague. It may seem that way now, but I'm sure in the future you'll be thanking me. Surina squinted her eyes as, as if she was narrowing for an aggressive pounce. No refunds. Mm -hmm. We got swindled out of 100, 100 credits. I'll just trust the great room, says Hunter Stalker. What even is the great room? Is it like a, a spirit place? Is it the place beyond the veil? I don't think I understood exactly what is the great room. Shut up, says Surine. You smell a hint of incense within the air. Okay, we can call someone to the youth in return. Let's check our, our youth phone. Today is Tuesday the 6th, ladder irredeal. It's uh, 12.53, 31. We have a notepad with our uh, a bunch of stuff. We, we can go to the burg, if Yuffie wants to take me to the burgers, go to Alanis, I'm going to a surgery tomorrow. Okay, this, this is the past, this already happened, we already went to Alanis to get surgery, so we're getting some lore. Turn in the audit, I've completed the audit assigned to me today and need to remember to turn in a physical copy of it since my power is out. I called Jake and she said she would meet me halfway out. Deliver the amulet, move step, Maeve stepped by to pick up a couple of my week's audits and left a red diamond shaped necklace in the... I thought about keeping it, but every time I put it on it just slipped off, the glass must be faulty. It's probably how it fell off into her neck, off her neck into my floor in the first place. I need to remember to return to her next time, she comes by to pick up more papers or next time I report to Sterling. And 447 archive notes, okay interesting. Hold on, let's check out the wallpapers. You'll rain, that's that. That medicine. Cool. There, there's a lot. Virtual boo boo. Surine Astro Science. That's, that's nice. Kind of slack. 
I'm gonna go with... Uh... Damn. Um, Yuffie Monochrome. <laughs> Yuffie Hyper Pop. Yeah, let's go with Yuffie Hyper Pop. Best girl. Photo album, not available in the demo. Pharmaceutical catalog, nope. Messages. A lot of messages. Let's explore some more. We haven't even left this alley, Jesus Christ. There's a note on the front. TTPS.newcenter.med. Ronda is on vacation and not a tutorial award, you come back later. Okay. And this is New Youth Center. They offer all kinds of stuff. Mostly cosmetics though. Goofy stun. <laughs> Hell yeah. She's so fun. Okay, let's get over here. You can feel heat emanating from the neon signs. This is written in old font. I can't read it. This is the burg, you've his favorite hole in the wall. Are you sure you're done exploring? There is no going back. No, I'm not done exploring. I still have things to do. Don't read old fun. <laughs> Who doesn't love Yuffie? Oh, I can get it out of my head. Why did I bring up Yuffie's childhood? Stupid, stupid! Mary, I'm insensitive. Apologies to Yuffie. Hey, Yuffie. What's up, Tentacle Sentinel? I'm sorry about earlier. Hmm? About, you know... Never mind. A childhood comment? Yeah... My girl! When does anything bother me? As aside from Rivian, of course. I guess close to never. Bingo, girly. So don't stress about it, okay? Yeah, right. How do you do it? Do what? You know? How do you, like, not stress or anything, ever? It's my trade secret! Mm -hmm. I admire you. It's quite the gift you, you got. Well, we're all different, aren't we? Yuffie smiles cheerfully and steps out of your path. The elevator goes up to my apartment's level. You can hear someone yelling in one of the apartment rooms. I should probably leave strangers home alone. Lock door. Lock door. Anything else? No. Your apartment door is locked. Key. Uh, Surine unlocks the door to her apartment. Take your time inside. Surine steps in into her apartment. The air both in and out and off the room is quite cold. I feel kind of awfully nostalgic whenever I come home. There is a lot of bad memories creeping up I can't quite place. Sometimes I get lost in thought in my room trying to dig deep, dig deep enough to find one, even though it always sends feeling dejected. It's like there is something important I'm forgetting, or like the distance between me and them is always the same. Reaching closer just pushes them further out. I hate nostalgia. Serena steps to the center of her room, where an icy draft from the overhead vents and fun assaults her face. <gasps> ah yes, home. Sad face. I always keep the main light off. For some botch reason, it's behind a ceiling fan that never stops spinning. The strobing makes me queasy. Queasy, huh? Why isn't queasy spelled with a Z? As you trail off in thought, your stream of ideas is broken by the sight of Yuffie smiling at you through the open crack of your door. When you make eye contact, her smile grows larger. <laughs> I almost forgot. Of course we're gonna let her inside, come on. You know, you know you can come in, right? 
I, uh, I've never been in your room before. You feel the need for a whisper without stepping inside? Uh, I thought this was your private space. Yeah, but I'd rather have you inside than oogling me from the doorstep. How about oogling you from your bed? Maybe not on... Yuffie makes herself comfortable out of your bed before you can ask her not to. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Mm -hmm. Yuffie kicks her legs and smiles cheerfully in your direction. Streaming del Club del Vomito, says Jack. Hello, Jack! What's up, Jack? It's Jack! It's Jack, the best guy. The jackest of them all. Mm. Jack, I think you're gonna like this game. Well, no, maybe not. You're not much of a reader, you're more of an action guy. I know you, you don't read books, but look! There is an anime girl. And she's pretty funny. She's cute. There's something under her butt. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that's how sitting works. Yuffie pulls a metal fragment from out from underneath her. I like the aesthetic so far. Yeah, the aesthetics are pretty good. I like uh, the parallax, how everything moves as I scroll around. It gives it that extra oomph. The immersive oomph. It doesn't feel flat, it feels alive. Careful where you put your sharp suit. It's my first time seeing that thing. Did it fall from the ceiling? Here. Surina grabs a, a nearby trash can and holds it out for Yuffie to discard a metal piece into. Thanks. You found bone shears under your, your pillow. I was wondering where those went. Must have fallen from the top shelf. I kick a lot on my sleep. Surine. Yes? Why do you have those? I never knew what parallax meant, lol. The differing is what makes it special. That's the law of life. <laughs> yeah, differing is a uh, cool, period. I just thought it was some dumb buzzword mobile devs used. No, no, no. As far as I understand, parallax scrolling is uh, basically layering different amount of positions like we can we have the foreground the middle ground and the background and depending on how i move the mouse the back moves faster and the front moves slower so this gives it dimension it seems like i'm actually panning my head around a bit it plays with perspective Rempy does not have parallax, so I had to Yuri rig my own. Well, congratulations, this is some pretty cool parallax. Anyways, bone shears. We have bone shears. No idea why. They were here before I lost my memory. I put them out of the way, but they must have fallen. You could could have bought an eye, girl. Let me toss them. Yuffie reaches out an open hand. And I have a feeling they're gonna come in handy. I'm sure they will. We found some gauze in your cabinet. And a family photo. You dig through some junk and discover a photo of young Surine. A girl of the same age and a middle-aged woman. Oh yeah, this thing. My old family, maybe? My mother and little sister? Or so I've always assumed. In the first two months after Yuffie and Navs found me, I wandered around several wards, asking if anyone knew who these are to wear. No dice, though. I was so desperate, I even tried hy hypnotherapy. It helped me figure out how I felt about these two. I felt disdain and pity towards the one I assumed to be my mom, and both disgust and detachment toward the person I assume is my sister. Knowing there was some kind of bad blood between us helped me move on. Can't help but notice that there's no uh, male characters. It looks like a Tohu kind of situation. Which is fine. But sometimes I can't help but wonder if those feelings were ever justified. Why would I ever have a happy picture of people I hate? Something doesn't quite add up. And I can't ever bring myself to get rid of it. 
I've tried. That old thing stomping you again? Yeah. I can ask around in DG and see if anyone's seen him. It's on the other side of Sunny Tori and it's been a couple of years since since you've searched. Sure. You do that? I do anything for you. It's part of the mystery. Hmm. The missing male specimens. Granted, you brought me bought me a burger, of course. I can cover lunch. Nah, -uh. it's my treat this time. I already told you. Hamburger. <laughs> you can get the next though. Deal. Yuffie takes a photo. Okay, let's let's put up let's put some music. Let's hamburg the burger. Hmm. Okay, I gotta play the disc. Look, it's Lolrats! And who is this guy in chat? I wonder who? Maybe the very same person who made the music? Nah, no way. They wouldn't be here. Ooh, heavy. Oh. <laughs> That's some breakcore, alright. Lost track on the board. <laughs> Scoot over. <laughs> I just cut out the music. I don't have manges, you know. You sprawl out into the bed. Yeah, the, the, the parallax is very nifty, megalomaniac. The divot you make in the mattress pulls Yuffie down against your side. Mm. She smells strongly of lipstick and tuberies. At first you feel short of breath, but get used to it in time. She scooches her waist more snugly against yours as the two of you get situated. She's rather pillowy and warm, and surprisingly, doesn't fidget much at all. She holds her hands played out above, gesturing upwards. Have you ever looked up in the Grand Atrium at night? Or the frigid fecund border? I was at the GA once, looking out from a high floor in Sterling Tower. I saw the moment the daylights dimmed, and it was pretty neat. Everything went dark. It was almost like there was no ceiling at all, just a big black void. You feel Yuffie resituate against you? No ceiling? That sounds... Spooky! I'd be scared of, like, falling... up? Hmm? Yeah, I totally get that. Saying someone smells like dewberries makes me think they smell like berries in general. Well, berries do smell kind of citrus in general. Hmm. Yeah, I totally get that. It's a weird fear, but it's death how I felt at the time. I haven't seen any other atriums at night though. Not big, not big ones at least. I hear the Fikandali ceiling at the frigid complex border has busted lights that flicker at night, like a giant skylight show. Can you imagine being next to a huge FC wall there? Just looking up at the ceiling and seeing a dark line where it blocks out half of the sky. What's a dewberry? I... I don't know. I, I have no idea. Let's see, dewberry. Dewberry. Looks like a sort of blackberry. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a blackberry. So let's say she smells kind of like blackberries. Must be amazing. Yeah, it's it's true, she said dewberry, not dewberry. It's a fictional berry. Oh, how very clever of you. We should check it out someday. We really should. We really should. It's a plan then? Yep. Not sure when though. We'll find the time. Sure will. You lay for a few more moments before getting up. Okay, there's a lot of clicking left to do in this room. Ah, my old USB reader. 
I think there is some old draining USBs from Sterly Tower in my pack as well. It never hurts to refresh yourself with the basics. Do you think those things will ever go out of date? What? Oh, nah. USBs. You can find various USBs throughout the world, left behind many different people for many different reasons, both intentional and by accident. Uh, yeah, picking up a random USB, that, that's a virus for sure. Either somebody, some very unlucky nerd dropped his USB, or a very malicious nerd dropped his USB and he's gonna infect whatever you stick it into. And he's gonna take your credit card details, and he's gonna call the cartels on you, and all of that, that sort of nasty stuff. So, uh, yeah, in real life, don't pick up USBs, guys. They got cooties. <coughs> okay, yeah. Consider reading the USB Turina currently has to better understand her occupation as a size spec. Can be a USB killer too. RIP PC. Okay, let's check out... Okay, we have the USB reader and we have the overview size specs and the internal affairs announcement. Okay. That's mucho texto, that's a lot of text. But we're gonna read it because we gotta know what size specs are and the whole entirety of this game is basically reading. It is widely known that humans, save for the ho homonomana, homonoma, or human tumors of battle constructs have some form of dormant psychosia, a mental illness or flaw that begins to show its teeth the more stress is taken on. The exact effects of psychosia are extremely diverse and dependent on a person's mental traits, history, fears, developments, and inclinations. These things typically become more vibrant and can be heavily perverted the more someone divulges in psychosia, including situations and healthcare neglect, Subjecting oneself to extreme stress or frequent moderate stress pushes psychosia symptoms to the surface. On the aforementioned healthcare, stabilizers or psychiatric stabilizers are a type of tranquilizer medication regularly taken by most people to reduce stress, offering protection from psychiatric breakdowns while having a relatively small list of side effects to boot. Keeping psychosia at bay is far more important than simply staying someone's emotional collapse, however. It can be extremely dangerous and scotchly, not only- is that a verb? Is that an adjective, sorry? Not only to the victim of emerging psychosia symptoms, but also to others who have the misfortune of being near someone suffering from a psycho break. You see, psychosia, in contrast to other disorders, has a habit of causing lucidation, a poorly understood part natural event where mutations of reality around the victim suddenly manifest. The content of such lucidations always seems to align with the victim's mental state and imagery, though the reason why is under, why is under constant debate. In a highly significant portion of the instances in which someone experiences a psycho break, these bodily mutations cause organ failure and distort the victim's body beyond use rendering them scotched until they're tossed in a body bin or taken to a hospital room for reconstruction. These mutations of the body as a result of lucidation are called saltations. Many saltations are harmful and often removed during routine surgery, but some are relatively benign and kept at a request, at a request of the victim. Saltations that resemble aesthetic desires, for example, are often kept, even in large sizes that cause temporary anemia. That's a uh, lack of blood supply, so basically they're keeping a, a tumor because it looks cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Now onto the topic of liabilities. Rarely, select victims are able to both cope with a psychosis mental strain and also exert enough control over their, their lucidations to remain in a functional state for extended periods of time. However, their unstable mental state and sporadic use of lucidations can make them a severe hazard to others around them. Some people, in extremely special cases, suffer no harm from diving into psychosia and can withhold and avoid proper treatment. Those who intentionally neglect their stabilizers for the purpose of psychosia and lucidation indulgence at the expense of other safety are called liabilities. Hi, hi, hi! Hello, Ilo Niki, nice seeing you, welcome to the stream. We're reading, we're reading a lot. 
Those of which who suffer no harm from the exchange are called abnormal liabilities and tend to have extreme emotional deficiencies even when on regulated stabilizers. We're reading about meds. So basically, basically in this world, people be crazy. And when they get crazy enough, they mutate. And if they mutate, they're a danger to society. Awesome. All liabilities are considered to be extremely dangerous to the general populace and must be routinely scotched by trained officials to keep sanitaria safe. These officials, known as psychiatric specialists, Sispecs for short, here's the key word, we're a Sispec. Surin is a Sispec, or main character. Okay, are trained to hunt down liabilities, diagnose their conditions to assess their strengths and weaknesses, and then eliminate them. Sometimes a Sispec is accompanied by a crisis nurse, Some, someone trained in the same studies as a Sispec sends any doctoral studies on diagnosing groups and classes of psychosis, and with a focus on combat assistance, pilgrim use and the cleanup of and binning of Scotch bodies. A crisis nurse could be considered a Sispec without a doctorate in psychiatric studies. Both Sispecs and partner crisis nurses get their orders and pay directly from synapse terminals and receive training and conditioning within their work workplace, the Sterly Tower, that lies at the heart of the Grand Atrium Ward. Some Sispecs that survive their hash deployments for extended periods earn significant freedoms and the power to shepherd and issue tasks to other newer Sispecs. These individuals are known as Tenured Independent Psychiatric Specialists, or TI Sispecs for short. Always, there exists Always there exists one such TI Sispec awarded the position and title of retainer. This retainer convenes with providence for instructions on how to operate and trickles this information down to the lower ranking members. God damn the lore goes deep. I am not brave enough to read a second USB right now. <clears throat> I need a drink. <clears throat> Let's go! <laughs> Getting hyped up for a visual novel, that's a first for me. In the window, let's look out into the window. Okay, let, let me check chat. Um, we learned how to read today. Do you, you do find cranberries in the US, but usually you, you get them with food if you're hospitalized. Yeah, just not in hospitals. I brought cranberries today. I never seen them in the hospital. Yes, in hospitals. I get hospitalized with sepsis like twice a year. Oof. And they give me them. Sad face. Usually toast, yogurt, jello, or banana. I think it's just because I get sepsis. It's really good for certain infections. Drat, one of my imbecilic prospects slash experiments has been foiled. Was gonna test how the delectable a concoction made out of Dr. Pepper and cranberry juice tasted, but I don't have any cranberry juice on hand. Hmm. Talking about delectable uh, potions, once I made uh, <laughs> what I called Irish pilk. You you guys know pilk, it's uh, Pepsi and milk. Yeah, the meme drink, yeah, 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 haha, <laughs> funny. Um, then I added some whiskey, and that's it, that's, that's Irish pilk. It's it tastes bad. I, I don't know what to say, but it's something. You wanna try it? Yep, you can try it. This is what I would <laughs> this is what I would say if there wasn't a jutting wall on the other side blocking my view. Ever use your window? If I wanted to stare at a wall, there is plenty of others. Now nah, I meant like, have you ever messed with it? Like, have you ever thrown anything out of it just to see where it goes? Won't it just hit someone walking in the Lost Atrium? How sure are you that this leads to the atrium? You can see a thing! That's a good point. I always just assumed. Drop something out of the window, don't drop anything out of the window, or throw Yuffie out of the window. Throw our best friend out of the window. You know I'm gonna try it. But I'm gonna say because I'm a coward. Come here, girl! Yuffie springs off your bed and rushes over exuberantly. Well, I am here! I'm gonna throw you out the window, okay? <gasps> okay, but you have to count to four first and then throw me on, in, on go so I know it's gonna happen. Whoa, 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 hey, I was just joking. I didn't actually mean it. She is such a good doggy. 
I don't even- I love that she actually barks at you when her uh, text lines are playing. That's such a nice detail. I don't even think you'd fit between the window and the wall on the other side. Ha <gasps> <laughs> I was joking too! Mmm, sure. Let's drop something out of the window. You drop a pen out of, out of the window. And you don't hear a sound. Strange. Lame. Mm. Oh, the computer. Let's get into the computer. I can see out of into out. Uh, no, that's the window. No, I wanna. I wanna be a gamer. I wanna go into my PC if I can. Yeah, no. Doesn't seem to be like it's a possibility. Found USB three and USB four. <laughs> Let's put on some music. Okay, this sounds very much like Sewer Slut, or at least the intro. Mm, is there anything else we can do, search, talk about in this room? Maybe, maybe not, I'm gonna click everywhere. Yeah, 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 we know that. There's gotta be something. Okay, Yuffie. Hey Yuffie, what's up Squeezy? Oh, 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 those USBs fell out of her pocket. Mm, we gotta read them first, because we're evil. Okay, do you know how to fix a phone's camera flash? Do you know techie stuff? Techie stuff? What do you mean? Like camera stuff. I'm really good with tinkering and hardware. It's like glorified toy, toy blocks for adults. But that software stuff, it makes my brain fall in. Yeah, that's a normal reaction. I, I think uh, I actually studied computer science. Um, my compiler's class was borderline traumatizing. I was tweaking, tweaking every day to pass that class. Jesus Christ. And I only made like a shitty version of R. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna go into uh, programming stuff, but basically I had to make my own programming language. And I did pass, I made a, a shitty copy of R, the R programming language. And it could do basic math, and read text, and do some calculations and stuff. Yay, I am a programmer. <laughs> or th that's what I like to think. My camera's flash is broken, think you can fix it? Bridge compilers give me, give me nightmares to this day. Yeah... Yeah, sometimes we should uh, sometime we should get a drink and just vent our frustrations. Soon. Let's get some Irish pilk, some whiskey and pilk and uh, just uh, have a nice manly cry about compilers. Great core, nice. Let me have a look see. Surini hands you for her phone. Don't go through my photos, please. I would never. Hmm, looks like a busted LED. Is that hard or soft? What? <laughs> Where? Or something? Hard or soft? Where? <laughs> it's hardware. Can you fix it? There is an innuendo hidden in there. Tell me, chat, are you hardware or are you software right now? <laughs> mm hmm. But I need a new LED and a table to work on. I can arrange that. Yuki hands you your phone back. Okay, so. I guess. Yeah, the, the lantern. We saw a pitch black room uh, on the hallway. Way, way back. So I'm guessing the flashlight is for that. So, how does your place in DG compare? Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> this place is a shab. Why are you still living here? It's my home. Yeah, but like, you got carrot credit, girl. You could buy a small apartment in the grand atrium or a sick pad. I just feel like there's some unfinished business here. You a ghost or something? Maybe. Boo! 
<laughs> no fair. You didn't even flinch. Yuffie shrugs. I'll scare you easily, Sue. Women. Good women. No kidding. Neighbor, keep it down! At least I spooked someone. Okay, that's... Can we give her something? That's cute, but you do need this. Yeah, I, I think I gave her my keys. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That is all. Sure thing, Squiddy. Okay, what's this? You find a Marikiari. Ah, this old thing's still here. It's a Marikiari, a kind of homage box for someone important lost to the bins. Or that's... That's when they die, right? They get binned. Or well... Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can put stuff back in it, but you cannot take anything out. At least not without breaking it, that is. It's supposed to symbolize giving things to the one lost, almost almost as, as if the box itself is the bin they wound up on. Wound up on. Most people never find out which bin their loved ones were discarded down. Some kind of safety measure to ensure nobody falls after them. Sounds like a cover-up for being lazy and losing track if you ask me. Thrown away. Rage is a lot of work, says... Su compilador, que es eso? What is a compiler, he asks. Asks. Uh, oh no. Um, basically, it takes the words that are in a programming language and transforms it into instructions for the computer to execute. That's as basic as I'm willing to explain. That's what a compiler is. There you go. Surini picks up the Marie Chiari and holds it close to her face. I don't know who this is for, I must have lost someone before I got everything. I've tried looking for a framed photo of them, like you're supposed to have steering on a Marie Chiari, but I could never ever find one. We can deposit a memento, break it open and inspect its contents, hmm, or leave it up alone. Huh. I am feeling quite sacrilegious. So, we do not know anything about our past. This girl is completely amnesiac. And there is this black box. This box with things inside uh, from someone who died and we're trying to find something about them. So, yeah, let's break it open. Are you sure? Well, that's foreboding. Are we sure, chat? Do we respect the dead, or do we learn about our past? Jack says yes, and Jack's the captain. Jack's the boss, so we're gonna go with yes. Let's break it open. Smash. Forgive me, friend, but if I am <laughs> to remember... Surina smashes the Mario Chiari upon the floor. It's just the only lead I have. And digs through the broken pieces. But... We find a flower. Flower? That's it? Can we talk? Oh, okay. Can we show you the flower? Maybe she knows something. Strange flower. Is it uh, is it related to the rose we saw in the intro in the beginning? Where, where we got slimed? The, the Nickelodeon PM opening with Dan Schneider where we got slimed. Where we got uh, the, the, the intro, the nightmare, where the, the slime fell on us and we were holding up the shell, the flower. Jesus Christ, the, the intrusive thoughts were just pouring out of my mouth. Starting to get streamer syndrome. Hey Yuffie, what's up Squiddy? You know what this is? Show flower. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare! <laughs> Surinia hands Yuffie the flower. You know a lot, a lot about flowers, right? Do you know what kind this is? Oh, whoa! Pretty! So... What is... You don't know what it is? Yeah, it's a red menoria. They like to grow in the deep clinic, dangerously near fray. That's why even though they're abundant where they grow, they're quite rare to get a hold of. 
Are there other col colors of Honoria? Not that I know of. Hmm. Thanks. Any time. Any time. Freddy Birdie says, what the hell is this? Well, this is a visual novel with anime girls and mental illness. You can tell it's about it's uh, a bit schizo because of the color palette, which is based. It's art, Freddy. Jack no knows what's up. <laughs> Anytime. Okay, I'm guessing. Uh, let's let's get a breath of fresh air. I'm guessing that's basically all we can get from this room, and there's a whole city. Or, or rather a whole world to explore, so let's head back. You think you stepped on something? Cluck, 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 cluck. And we're out. This really is a one in a kind experience. You are right, Megalomaniac. You small burgers. If we talk to you in here, do we have a different, get a different option? Like a ball? That one is a lamb. You people saw that spreadly notebook and rips out the page. Speedy, what's up? Whoa, that's a lot of options. Um, I'm confused. Hey, I'm still a, a little disoriented from the operation. And there's just a lot going on. Hey, take my hand. Take her hand. Is this about your amnesia? Are there some holes you need help working through? I'm... I think I'm blanking on things. Or I'm overwhelmed by everything. Okay, blank. We're blanking. I think my amnesia is acting up. Yuffie grabs both of your shoulders and looks sternly into your eyes. You're Surine. Something happened to you a couple years back and left you with an amnesia on the floor outside of an abandoned mall. I found you. Picked you up. And help you get back on your feet. Let me chat. You got a job as a size spec at Sterling Tower. A woman named Jika is your boss. Since the events, you've made friends with co workers and an internet pal, Lida. Leida. Lida, I'm gonna go with Lida. And that about sums it up. <laughs> Whoa. Was that rehearsed or something? You had zero hesitation. The first time I was a lot more scatterbrained. The first time? Yep. This is the fourth. Thanks. Was it helpful? Yes, actually. Yeah, very. Glad I could help. The fourth time, so it's not a once and done amnesia. We... we blank. We we lose track of stuff. That's crazy. Yuffie winks. Um, can you read old font? Uh, old font? Yeah, why? I was not expecting that answer. What? Come on, I'm not illiterate. Besides, everyone knows at least uh, a little old font, right? No. No way! <laughs> you can't read? I can't read old font. Same difference! <laughs> it's entirely different. <laughs> oh, what you ask? There is a sign overhead written in old font and uh, I was curious. I thought Yuffie was illiterate, for shame. She does look a bit illiterate, but... Turns out she might be smarter than we think she is. Point it out to me and I can read for ya. But, but... But you have to say Yuffie is the super duper smartest smarty in Sanitoria and then grovel. Not doing that. Sounds the groveling then? Fine. Okay. Um, let's read old font then. Can you read that Yuffie? Ahem! Surine checks to see if anyone's around before embarrassing herself. <laughs> Smartest smart in the clinic. Can, can you just read it? I suppose that'll do. But I'm sure you could do better. Surine gave you a look of extreme discomfort. Or not. Ahem. It reads, 
B50 Los Casidolio, where we currently are. Damn, I never really thought about how old these area names were. Okay. We have unlocked literacy chat. We can read. Finally. After more than two decades of life, I can read. <coughs> oh, fucking die. Yuffie, it says. Um, actually, I can't read this one. Haha. <laughs> you legible? Nah, it's just a different type. There's multiple kinds of old phone? Yeah, basically, uh, these types are common, so I never bothered to learn it. Huh. Smarty pants, whatever. Who want else to say? Not so smart after all, huh? It says the Burger new font, but it's stylized to look like old font. And there's a. Are there aesthetic stereo rules for the, this block? No? No. No, there's definitely not. I guess the bird is just pilled. It's pill pilled and base based. They say this would be useful. Thank you. Whatever, I'm thinking. Uh, let's keep reading. It says there is seven bombs beneath us. What? <laughs> nah, just pulling your tentacle. <laughs> Chat. It's a natural sign. Nobody made this one. Why are they they so hard to tell apart from the old ones? <laughs> Signs. What, what the fuck is going on? Time, bo time bomb, bomb, seven bomb, bomb. Huh? There are there seven bombs. <laughs> Why are, there so, are they so hard to tell apart from... from uh, <clears throat> That's probably what someone would say if they saw more sign and did no new font. Fair point. Plus, most people think old font came about as a result of natural signs. People saw unique symbols on natural signs and began to use them as a way to convey the, the locations or objects on which they were found. Ah, I see. Yuffie gives you a widening smile. Thanks, Yuffie. So these uh, just grew from the ceiling? These are natural? A streak of anxiety spikes within Suri's chest. Um, no thank you. The place makes me uneasy. I'd rather not. Fuck. Fine. Oh! <laughs> A little anxiety never escaped anyone. Very red. Very red. Surin is feeling unsettled. Oh, thank goodness I decided to check out this creepy fucking hole cap. I could have missed something. Like being creeped out. You found sharps. Window? It's a window to, uh, into the adjacent room. If not for this and the open door, this hole cap would be pitch black. It's a room covered in daylights. I prefer to not be blinded. Real, the best room. The, this room is my second monitor's desktop background. Holds breath. It's a very nice looking room. Like Jack said, differing is just cool. It just makes everything look cool. Okay, that's a cross and that's a grab. USBs, yes, more USBs. I'm gonna read them later. Found a red scarf in the trash. Red scarf. Can we... Can we... Uh, where's that? Okay. Weapons, kitchens, shards. Red scarf. Item equipped. Yeah. Mm, no. That's busted. Uh, yeah. Hey, Yuffie. What's up, girl? Um, I cannot give her an item? This does not work that way? I guess not. I guess not. Story enough to cut through one of the pieces of metal. That's all. You know, if you want to look at me, all you have to do is ask. I'm sorry. I was spacing out. Found two sharps. Inter intestinal stuffing, what's this? 
intestinal stuffing. Prosthetic pink and sparkly guts filled with the latest release of locum pink could be used for large or small intestines. In, in, intestine, intestines. Uh, while many high-end stuffing pieces are retailed to surgeons in sanitaria, the manufacturing process is often outsourced to magna, magna suricals in an effort to skirt regulation and the steep costs of approved materials. Good night, take care, Rage, thank you for coming by. Have a nice, enjoyable sleep. Do take your, your well-deserved rest. <coughs> Let's keep exploring then. Whoa, hey, a diggy pick. Or a, a diggy pick shell? Whoa, aren't those illegal? Definitely. Yuffie winks. My lips are sealed. Thanks. Oh, what a badass friend. I'll have to find some diggy pick gods if I want to make a complete one. And someone who can put it together for me too. I'm not really tech savvy. This sounds like a side quest. It's a natural vent that circulates air throughout the clinic. Wait, do cops like exist? Maybe. I I'm guessing if... or maybe suspects are kinda like cops because they uh, shoot people with pills and medicine. The, those who are crazy? I don't know. <laughs> Never thought about it until now because I assumed they were just side specs, but like... This and that? I'm glad people are enjoying the game. It's great. It's absolutely great. It's art! It really is. This air is as cold and jarring as it's a suppository. <laughs> it's a natural fluorescent light. Looks like someone removed its wires though. Shit, so cold, blah blah blah. Okay, grabby. You more USBs. Wait, there was a grabby in here. I don't know what that is, but it's disgusting and I'm not gonna touch it. Well, we already learned by entering into the room that we can just pressure student into doing stuff. Uh, seriously, fine. Surine digs through the suspicious pile. Surine. Girl. Toads grows. Uh, yeah. Surine pulls a strangely narrow scapel out from the refuse. Uh, you never know what might come in handy. Wash your hands. Scalpel? Narrow scalpel. Can be combined. Wait, you quit bone shears, you're feeling anxious. Anxious. Big picture, see, see, no, more. Yeah, no, we cannot combine. <laughs> I'm guessing we do not have the other stuff, but that's nice to know. Credit cards, money, antique st skin stitch needle. A long fine needle used to join organic materials with minimal blood loss. The ancient re residents of vital constructs are not blessed with immortality. When faced with death millennia ago, some accepted their fate, while others grafted their bodies into the walls of the living world in order to postpone their fate. That's horrifying. Could it suggest an undying hope or an old fear? Could we combine stuff? Could we combine stuff? No. No, no, we cannot. The door is locked. The mall's been locked up and off limits since the massacre inside. But even before that, the mall was abandoned. How were, was there a massacre inside if the mall's been abandoned? All of the victims were line riders. Line riders? Mm hmm. Drug addicts. So the mall was like some kind of illegal drug ring ringside? Yeah, something like that. I briefed over the sterile tower records of the case. Yuffie let her smile drop out, but for a moment. It was really nasty stuff. Something in your gut begins to churn. Probably best we stay away then. Yuffie stood proudly. But... If you need a haunted mall explorer, pal, I'm always here. 
It could be fun. Nah, I'm good. And your idea of fun is really weird. Aww. Well, let me know if you reconsider. You feel winked. Is there anything else then we can do? Pixel hunting. Let's go back. That's blocked. Yep. Seems we've cleared the room for now. For now, if only. Is there really nothing we can do with uh, just with the uh, items we picked up? Sharp. Mm hmm. An incredibly narrow scalpel that holds incredible. You must sever some oddly specific surgical job that's no longer needed, though it can. Still rather talented at getting to tight spaces. Maybe if we combine it with the bone shears, I'm thinking. Am I trying to combine stuff, right? Love how everyone res resorts to just erratically whipping their mouse to double check for items they might have missed. Well, yeah, it's basically an instinct. Whatever. Whatever, fine, let's go. The muffled chatter of enclosed crowds can be heard. This is Boulder's dispensary. She sells over-the-counter first aid and some other convenience store items. Okay, let's go. I'll wait for you outside. Hello, miss. Hello, Tsurina, come in. How are you feeling today? A little woozy. Mm. I think I got something for that. Okay, let's shop. I'm a little hurt. Let's see what, what I can do about that. We got bandages, gauze, panafrine, panafrine peel, scalpel blade, a small sharp blade great for unhygienic surgeries, homemade weaponry, and other unsafe things. Can be used for ammunition and other shit means. Keychain lost blood loop. Return. Come back soon! Scalpel blade. Scalpel and a scalpel blade, maybe. Now a scalpel. And a scalpel blade. You don't have a weapon that uses some type. Um. You cut a scalpel blade into cut scal scalpel blades. And where are they? Got scalpel blade. Oh, scalp. What's up, Soma? Hey. Hey, what up? Patricio Garza. <laughs> Patricio Garza. Gracias por existir, enfermera. Te quiero mucho. Okay. Um, I'm guessing we're done here. Return. Talk. Talk to me, nurse. Hey, Wilder. Mm hmm. Any news? Anything interesting happen, happen lately? Mm, there's always interesting things happening in sanitary if you dig under the surface. My hands have been clean though, so I haven't heard of anything lately. Aside from those side specs defecting. Ah uh, yeah, Pakora and Lumil. Your side specs. If you hear anything you see about them? Nah, I've seen them around but never met with them. My boss Jika had beef. Beef. I see. Okay, it's getting a bit late. We're gonna go we're gonna keep going for now. We're gonna keep going for now. Uh, I know that once we enter the burger place and we have our burger date, uh, that's the end of the demo. But there's a lot to explore, so I'm gonna check stuff around, click around, <coughs> and then when I'm actually actually tired, I'm gonna head to the burger joint. I actually played a game once before with a friend. You're always listening to other people talk. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of running a store in CW at this point. Do you ever talk about yourself? 
no one really asks about me. And that's, that's not a bad thing either. What makes you say that? I have my fair share of drama back at home. I don't think the clinic knowing will do me any good. You sure about that? Sometimes it's nice to get stuff out there. Sometimes an issue of yours being seen is enough for its stress to feel light. Alright, you got me. How about after work one day I'll give you a call and we can chat. I'll spill some trash. Sure. Deal. Older lightly smiles. Before you go, can I get your number? I'll call you when I'm off work. Oh, oh, we, we're flirting. Yeah, of course. You ready? Mm -hmm. 8422004. Wait, I'm. Uh, zero 04. Uh, zero. Got it. Sweet. I'll catch, catch you later then. Stay safe on the job, Sue. Bright fluorescent light spots. So in here, in here. Are we missing something? A lot of my co-workers live down there in pleasant path. But they haven't met Yuffie, and I don't feel like introducing people today. Not today. Not today. Not today, okay. Well, let's talk to Yuffie for a second. Hey Yuffie, you need me? Calm down, calming down. How was your day? I've been gorked up on an up table all day, but how has your day been? My day? Soon enough. I woke up at 4.44 a.m. sweating like crazy, bed drenched. I dreamt about running really, really fast. Like an auto rail and I woke up kicking. <laughs> and then I got up to water my plants. But when I got over to the window, they were missing. And then I searched for them for at least 15 minutes before I realized that they died a few days ago and I had already tossed them out. I was really sleepy, don't judge me. So then I hopped on the auto rail and got stared at and ran back home, changed out of my pajamas, got back on the auto rail, stopped twice in Meryl's suits for snacks and then ran as fast as I could to find you. I feel like there's a lot of missed time there. <coughs> I think Yuffie needs some Adderall. I may have miscounted my snack stops. I see. Mm, what have you been up to lately in DG? What have you been up to over in Daughterfly Gardens? Let's see. Oh, I've been learning how to knit. What kind of stuff have you, have you made? Oh, nothing yet, I got distracted by gardening. You've been gardening? Yeah, well, I got distracted with training for work and all of my plants died. How's your new job going? Let me guess. You got distracted by something and never finished training. No, actually. I wrote it all the way. I just wanna save the big news for dinner. Oh, that's awesome. Meet any cool new people in the world? Made any friends? At first, yeah. I met this one loon, Cecilia. She's on that ra one radio show you always hear playing the in religious patients awards. If you wo yeah, if you wo what the fuck's wrong with me? If you wanna go up in the world, you gotta stop looking down at yourself. The evangelist. I just wallowed myself. What the fuck? That's the one. Yeah, so it turns out, absolute egoist in person. No surprise there. Oh, she seemed so kind when I first met her. She invited me to hang out with her and a couple of friends at the bar. And all was good with Mary, the thing she said to the waitress. Hot gods are everywhere at the top of any totem pole, religion included. The evangelist, hey no thief, we just happen to have the same stuff. <laughs> Speaking of religion, everyone's just so preachy there. Remind me why you moved away to the most schismatic ward. I needed some greenery and it's pretty. Plus, the people are at least hopeful. The peeps of CW are kind, but also just really depressing. A little bit like Agora Road, the internet's best kept secret. The Agora Road Forum Macintosh Cafe. The people are kind, but also really depressing. 
<laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed, but I'm glad I got to be around a little bit at least. Take care, Ilo. Take care. Thank you for coming on by. And yeah, I'm guessing that soon-ish I'm gonna be closing shop because my voice is getting tired, my tummy hurts a little bit from acting, and um, I gotta have the AC turned off because if not the microphone catches it, so I'm sweltering. I'm like sweaty motherfucker right now. <clears throat> but that's besides the point. It's not like you can smell me through the internet. Uh, yet. Not yet. One day. One day you'll be able to. Or at least I'll, I'll be able to mail you my sweat so you can smell it. Count on it. <laughs> Anyways, Yuffie stirred at me. Yeah, maybe it's getting to me too. I'll visit the garden sometime. Granted, you still haven't found anyone to replace me yet, of course. Replace you? Ha, <laughs> never. Just who exactly... <laughs> Just who exactly do you think you are to me? It was a joke, you... F Answer me! A best... An irreplaceable best friend. I'm not sure... Uh, I'm ready to take the step to become lovers. No. Lovers not an irreplaceable... Irreplaceable best friend for sure. Damn straight you are! And you better not forget it! That's all. Anytime, Slick. Well, chat, it's almost 11. I'm gonna head to the burg to get some burgers and wrap up this session. There is a lot, a lot, a lot to explore in this game. Uh, I actually played it before. There is some lock picking involved, which I do not remember how to access. If we get the LED light, uh, we can look inside this place, and there is a bunch of crazy stuff. I'll, like seriously, there's a lot to explore. If you wanna do it, then get the game from itch.io, download it, experience it for yourself. By the way, disc one is soon to be released, so this is just a demo. This is just a prologue. Things are gonna get better and cooler. Very probably. I don't know. We'll have to check uh, the game's Discord. So. Could you get a save before entering the board? Yes, sure, I'll save. Maybe we can revis revisit, revisit the game if um, if everybody feels like so. Yeah, we could. Are you done exploring? There's no going back. There, we saved. Now we're gonna end the stream. I'm finished. It's burger time. You and I step into the burg. Dot dot dot. And it's the Berg! We are here! How about that, huh? Huh? Are you ready for the best damn burger of your life? What you thinking about? Nothing really. Just wondering why I've never come to here before. I mean, like, it's right next to my apartment. They don't appear online. It's to give the place more of a hole in the wall kind of vibe, you know? I see. Hiding in plain sight. Yuffie nuts. That. You hear a voice from the back, holler out to you. Welcome, welcome to the burg, ladies. I'll be with you shortly. Just speak, <laughs> just speak whichever you both you like. <coughs> buy, buy Pukey game now. That's right. Even you, though you can get it for free, you can buy it, and that's cooler because money makes the world go round, and they can invest more assets into the game. Come on, let's snag the one in the corner. Voice sounds familiar. Yuffie drags you off before your brain can compute. G b b hey! You and Yuffie settle down in the corner's poof. The seat surface sticks to your legs like tacky plastic and its cushion wheezes out like a work bellows as your touch makes contact. Is it meant to do that? I feel like I killed it or something. The seat gave way so much that putting your arms upon the table fe felt awkwardly out of reach. Is that Sanai? Haha. <laughs> I see a Tohu reference I did not get. But Tohu Master Jack over here sure did. Or uh, at least that's what I'm guessing is happening. Can we sit in a different booth? They're all like that! Yuffie sat across from you but only sank down about an inch. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's uh, a big difference in height. 
I feel like a child looking from down here to up there. Oh, mom. Maybe we can move to a table? Squiddy, we're already here. Will it be awkward to move now? Since when has Yuffie ever felt awkward? Okay, fine. But you do, Tsurina, and she's manipulating you. Yuffie slides you a menu from an area of the table out of reach. Thanks. Yuffie smiles cheerfully. Let's see what they have. The Berg! Ah, oh, I was ready to read the, the menu. The menu is pretty small. A short menu means good food. Better decide what I want before we get lost in conversation. The Berg! The Berg signature! Three char grilled multi layered steak slices filled in between with fried string onions, raw onions, crispy bacon, potash hash strips, and our signature Berg BQ TM sauce inside and on the top in the Berg's iconic doctoral signature. The Heart Buster! A light and airy angel bun sandwiching roasted beef slices topped with a layer of two berries and raspberries with a generous explosive burst of chocolate sauce. The Cure. A toasted brioche bun with a cured ham bacon patty, bacon ham fin, raw onion strips and a dark and deep shoe sauce dunk cup. <coughs> the Bloody Bean Burger. The original pizza burger. Toasty thick garlic bread buns with pep pepperoni, thinly sliced salami, green onions, ba basil leaves, mushrooms, midnight olives, house char seasoning, chime pepper mix, and tomato sauce. The six sliders. Four customizable sliders with cream buns and separate toppings, each of your choice. Comes with four syringe bastards, each with any sauce you desire to spread on the sliders. Chicken niblets. Everybody knows the small crispies and fried chickens are the best parts. Why not all crispies? That's why we made a chicken niblet. More surface area, more crunch. Choose one of our signature sauces to be slaughtered or added on the side. Sweet and spicy Illy Chichuk Chong, barbecue TM sauce, or shoe sauce. <coughs> For drinks, we have Berkid beer, I drink cola, spice cola. Ooh, I have a cola. I'm gonna kill myself, that was so cringe. We got so much spice cola, yay. I got carried away, I'm sorry. And mineral water. Now this is quality gaming. It sure is. Everything sounds absolutely heart-bustingly delicious. Um, What should we choose? Uh, Red si says the six, slick six sliders, the bloody bean burger, the bloody bean burger, the original pizza burger, that sounds awesome. The cure, a toasted brioche one with a cured ham, you can buy bacon ham for you. That sounds... But the chicken niblets. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand the chicken niblets. Is, is it just like fried lard? Like no chicken? All, all fried? <laughs> um... I'm gonna go pizza burger. <sighs> Some sweet. I'm, I'm guessing raspberries and blueberries are sweet. With chocolate sauce, no, that's too sweet. No, I wanna uh, a more classic burger. I'm gonna go with the cure. I'm sorry. You can get. You guys can get what you want. I'm gonna go with the cure. Oh, what? What? Eh, what did I choose? Weirdo. You know? What? No, 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 no. Wait, I actually think I want the cure. The cure? It's amazing how many forms ham comes in, huh? Yeah. It's an entire pig. Um, an entire pig can be transformed into a variety of flavors. It's amazing. I wonder if it's crop farmed or a single selection. Yeah, let's go with the cure. It's like nuggets, but they're smaller, so they're crunchier. Oh! I, I thought that they made nuggets and then took out the chicken from the nuggets. Nuggets, so you just get the like the fried breaded parts. <laughs> I serious, seriously thought that was what was going on. Like all, all calories, no protein, all fat, all carbohydrates, no protein, no chicken, just nibbles, no chicken. So, are you feeling over the booth? How's life? You look nice. Work treating you well? Last I saw you, you were still getting your gloves on. But now, you're so put together. 
It's the clothes. I certainly feel professional. It's the clothes. Well, isn't that all that goes into being put together? I doubt there is a single person out there with all their shit together. Besides, people's greatest mistakes are made when they get too comfortable. Ahem. You ladies ready to order? Order? Okay, what's the voice I'm gonna do for this girl? I, I want I want her to be like uh, this deep voice button there, kind of cool. Yeah, this is my store. Tall lady spotted. That's right. I'm getting off early, so make sure you order everything you want now. Val? Hey, Sue. I thought I heard your voice. Yep, it was me. Uh, good job. Y'all know each other? She's a size pick as well. Or the Marion Suits Ward? Yup. I heard that TIPS of that ward, ward defected. Pakara, was it? Was she your boss? Yup. Did her partner Lumil become your new charge? Lumil. Also defected. What? Yup. Are you bossless? Yup. That's gonna be insane in handling a whole world alone. Well, I have my CM partner, Shay. And it's actually been real easy as of late. What? Yup. I'm not sure why, but that's the truth. I've had way too much free time. So you got a second job here? Yup. But why work in your free time? Was it to get away from Shay? Yup. Can you please, can you place an order now? I gotta wrap up. Oh yeah, sorry. I'll take the cure. And I'll take the usual. The what? The usual. That's not on the menu. No, I meant... Uh, I'll take the heart blister. Coming right up. Val leaves. And later returns with both your orders. Both you fin in and spare no time before digging up. This is how a burger is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I'm head out and set the door to lock. You can leave whenever. Thank you. Yep. Oh, one more thing. Do you mind if I shut the lights off? I don't want people to think we're open. There's enough light from the street, so you should be fine. Actually, what if I return or so? Cool, thanks. Ball turns the lights off. Bye. See you tomorrow. I like Val. She's got attitude. The eating eventually slows down and the talking begins. Haha, <laughs> me? Never. You sure? I bet you can, even with that pesky exemption. If you say that, but things are pretty good with the psych exemption. Robert spotted. I wouldn't mind staying pre-TI and making a difference and not doing the unsavory parts that come with it. Tell me about it. I only know the average definition. Sterling's in-house evil doctor, Holocene, said I'm too shaky to handle a pilgrim. She gave me a written exemption from the cleanup portion of Sizepec work. I think it's called the cleanup exclusion exemption or CEE, psych exemption. Cleanup portion? So the pill gunning, scotching, bidding, etc. Yeah, the dirty work. I just have to investigate liabilities and diagnose them from a distance. And then hand over the paperwork to Jika. Auditing, it's called, right? That's right. How'd you know? So, um. I know a lot more about Sterling than last time we spoke. Oh. I. I have a little surprise for you. Spill it, pups. Sterling Tower Personnel UV29 PCC BPPC. <laughs> PCC BPPC. Crisis Nurse. Crisis Nurse is such a badass title. Could be the, the title for a very cool game. Anything with Crisis sounds cool. I'm a CN now. A Crisis Nurse? That's right. This girl's been busting her tail under a ferret in Butterfly Gardens for the last year. Is that why you moved? Yep. So this means that I'm training everything a size spec is, minus a PhD in psychiatric studies. 
Shooting, meaning, yada yada. I've got on my own. I got my own pilgrim too. <laughs> Wanna see? No, I'm good. Thank you. Oh, right. Wait, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The PCCB. PPC stands for stuff. I wonder if someone who knows is here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Lol Rats knows. But I wonder what does it mean? Forget what PPC portion means, unfortunately. <laughs> huh, I wonder if LOL Rats is gonna tell you Pilgrim Certified Cleanup Binning Partner Program Certified. Whoa, that's a handful. That's a mouthful, rather. Do it for you? Of course I did! With a CN partner, we could complete entire jobs. Won't I have to hang around for you now? Nah, your ya girl got top scores. We can divide and conquer. You owe it, I bang bang. You won't have to see a thing. As long as I don't see it. I know what I'm doing protects people, but my stomach isn't the st strongest thing in the clinic. Hey, maybe it is now that you got that intestinal stuffing. That just leaves the queasiness which will go away in time. I think you're right. This, yeah? This is good. This is good good. Yuffie, I'm not sure what to say. Then just say, Yuffie, oh my god, that's amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. Yuffie, oh my god, that's amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. Woohoo! <coughs> oh my Woohoo. That, that's it. That's all I wanted in return. <coughs> so, does this mean you're going to work in with me tomorrow? Think we can file it for a partnership in the morning? That's the hope. You could stay over then. You could stay over. Fingers, finger emoji. Finger, uh, I cannot type. Chat. Okay. You could stay over then. Finger, 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 finger. Finger left. There we go. <laughs> that wasn't worth it at all. You could stay over and we could go together in the morning then. I'd love to, but I left my work attire back home in DG. But maybe once we're assigned together, we could share an apartment. Yeah. What's up? Are you sure it's okay to handle being alone? There is better side specs without a CN who could really use your help. I'd be useless. Hey, don't doubt me. I'm a professional now. I know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah? Yeah. Don't believe me? Then how about you quiz me? What? Give me a pop quiz. I know everything there is to know. Tip, pop quiz. Par <coughs> Participating in the pop quiz will allow you to learn important information you may not know. Alright, one quiz coming up. Hit me with the first question. Okay, we, we already read all of this. <laughs> What's a psychosia? Easy, it's a mental state, one that everyone has waiting dormant. Anyone can fall into a psychosia when under stress. That's why we take stabilizers, they keep us sane. That's right. But what does psychosia look like? That's a toughie. A psychosia changes from person to person. Usually it's shaped by an individual's stressful, stressful life experiences. That's why we need suspect auditing. There's too many unknowns. One person might go ballistic while another just mentally shut the, shuts down. That's right. That's right. What is a liability? When someone under stress neglects their stabilizers, they rapidly fall into their, their psychosia. It makes them a danger to themselves and to others but nothing that needs serious attention beyond pill pushing. <coughs> Until, of course, a psycho break happens. That's when lucidation occurs, and because of it, most people scotch themselves. They krill themselves. Those who don't become a serious issue, a liability. 
liabilities have unpredictable abilities due to lucidation, which they have lost control over. But even the most stable liabilities can lose control. They're all a threat to civilians. Right. What's lucidation? Philosophy with the wolf gall. Yeah, more like psychiatry, psychiatry with the wolf gall. What's lucidation? Okay, this is important lore. Basically, it explains everything that uh, the game's about. We are crisis nurses, people go crazy. If people go crazy, they mutate. If they mutate too hard, they warp reality. And we gotta bang, bang, shoot, shoot, restrain them. So, uh, the peace is kept. Yeah. When someone falls into psychosis, their view of the world and themselves is distorted by it, just like any other mental condition. The main difference is, is that if someone keeps barreling down into psychosia, their skewed view of the world around them and their bodies will begin to overlap with the real things. Their thoughts become reality. They elucidate. Some lucidations can also occur without a psycho break. Granted, an individual has to be neglecting meds and under stress for years for that to happen. That's quite abridged, but sufficient. Okay, we're almost there. What's saltation? Lucidations warp the land as well as bodies. The permanent warps are called saltations. Intense saltations can cause the body to contort on itself, which is the number one cause of sco sc scotching when someone has a psycho break. However, the most dangerous liabilities can reliably use and control saltations to their advantage. On another note, in normal people, men neglect and stress without a psycho break can form harmless saltations. Most people don't have these saltations sur surgically removed unless they cause health issues. That's right, you have a good example too. Do you mean my ears? I thought I had this since birth. You probably just got them so early on that you never knew. Children, children tend to get minor ones if they are well neglected. Yeah, but it's not uncommon to have a couple from life anyway. I had no idea! <laughs> What's a Psyspec's job? A Psyspec is a psychiatric specialist, a doctor and a combat professional wrapped up in one package. They audit liabilities, diagnosing them, them and addressing their properties, and then they take them out. They're employed by Sterling Tower, the giant building in the center of the Grand Atrium Ward. Providence, a council in charge of running the economy and other sanitary humanitarian needs from the top of Sterling, speaks through a single selected retainer. The retainer trickles down needs and jobs to the size spec force. Having a retainer is important for, for properly wording and interpreting Providence orders. Do you know who the current retainer is? Jika. That's right, my boss. Do you know who's on the Council of Providence? Nope. They are kept a secret for safety reasons. Right. We don't even know if it's a council. But Providence has been around since the old world. Last Sizepec question. What's a TI Sizepec? A TI? Tips for short. Oh, tips! They are like crazy good promoted side specs who have seniority and free reign to roam over their chosen ward or whatever else they think they're needed. Wherever. Right. They have an assigned ward to keep in check, but they can leave it if they feel a job needs them elsewhere. They are tenured and independent. Is that what the TI stands for? Right. What's a crisis nurse job? Oh, I know this well, we're like side specs without the doctor part. We're combat trained and can handle elimination meaning and cleanup. We usually patrol a ward to sell stabilizers and to bring scotch people to hospitals or bin them if they can't afford re reconstruction. But we can apply for a side spec partner program. I took the training course for it, so I'm able to apply. It let us get it let us get assigned to side spec we can work on it. <laughs> Philosophy with the wolf girl, schooling with the doggy, education with the kine, and teaching with the puppy, learning with the lupus, tradition with the woof woof, understanding the wow, tutoring the porf, knowledging the pooch. Got got any more? <laughs> got any more? If you got them, I'll read them. It lets us get assigned to a side spec we can work under. We assist in everything outside of auditing and take a great deal of work off our partner's shoulders. <laughs> Tutelage with the hound, absolutely. And what happens to Scotch people? Well, humans don't die like animals do. 
but our bodies can still be broken down to a point where we are unable to do much. And as long as someone in that state has a monitor for restoration, they can function again. It's the same as a machine. It may break, but as long as you pull all the pieces back in place, it begins to work again. When an animal dies, they stop working, and whether or not they're put back together, they'll never work again. That's the difference between death and scotching. Between us and animals. But not everyone can afford reconstruction. And liabilities are denied it outright by most doctors. People who wind up scotch without the funds to be put back, put back together get tossed down the bin. One of many chutes scattered throughout Sanitoria. Nobody knows where they go. Just somewhere else. Surina nods. And that's all. We survived the Canis Turalage. Um, uh, a drag. A dragogicum canis, is that Latin? Canis is Latin for a uh, dog. Right? Yeah. But a dra is that like a... Uh, like pedagogy, I guess, so it's a, a kind of tutelage. Hmm, cum, from... Come. <laughs> okay. But whatever, that's all. You finished the quiz! Wow! So, do you think I'm ready? Yeah, you're ready, but I'm still worried. Well, if it pays well, so it's, it pays well, so if so, something happens, I'll just get reconstruction. Yeah, but being scotch ain't pretty. I know what I'm risking too. I'll be just fine. Because you'll have my back, right? If, if push comes to shove... Of course I will. Yuffie nuts. Enlightenment with a woman's best friend? I'm running di dry on dog synonyms. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no no there is only a limited amount of ways to cook cook up that sentence. So it's getting late. Ready to turn in? Surina nods and stands up. Then let's boogie. Oh, and call me when you get home, of course. Indoctrination with Fido, that's a good one, yeah. Serena leaves the burg. And it's night. Not tonight. Absolutely not. Let's get into the elevator. Studying with the mongrel. That's just an insult. Home's just down the hall. It's pretty dark. Must be up for the night. Oh yeah, we gotta get the keys. Surina unlocks the door to her apartment and steps inside. Lessons with the rover. <laughs> Finally back home. We're finally back home. Yeah, let's uh, call you. Surina pulls out her phone. Ring ring. Surina! Did you get home safe? Sure did. Sweet. I'm just now boarding the auto rail. I'll call you when I get home too, but it, it'll be a while. Sorry for keeping you so late. Never apologize for eating my time, squids. I love you. And it's been forever since I got to see you. I'd stay up all night chatting if you had tomorrow if you had tomorrow free. But we'll get tons of time together after we get partnered, huh? So no need to rush. Do you think they'll accept us? Congenial seems tough lately and Dutterfly needs patrols. I bet they will, and if they don't, I'll beg! Oh no, how will Sterly ever resist your puppy eyes? No one can, not even Sterly management. The plan is flawless! <laughs> I sure hope so. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Have sweet dreams, okay? No more nightmares! If only that were easy. <laughs> I'll pray for you then. I am a DG resident now. Might as well get in on the customs, huh? Please, don't don't join any cults. I was only joking. 99 Yuffie. 99 Vesti. Beep boom. It's pretty gloomy in here. You turn the lights on. That's much better. And they broke. Well, shit. Head to the bathroom. 
That's a kilopede. They've been everywhere lately. They're poisonous to most things, but harmless to humans. Kill it, put it outside, or that's my friend, and he's coming with me. All right, come here, little buddy. Wanna go on an adventure? Is it weird to keep a bug as pet? Eh, who cares? What should I name you? Okay. Mm, let me look at chat. Puke is a developer, and Lolrats is second in command of the developer. Jack, you're gonna be the Kilopede. Jack the Kilopede. How about Jack? I think it fits you. Let's go with that. Okay. So answers the phone. I feel honored. I spit venom. Yeah, you're a badass. And have a thousand legs. Hello, Tsurine. Jika? Yes. I'm calling to make sure you're coming in tomorrow. Yeah, of, of course. Good. No skimping. I've never done that before. I know, but tomorrow is important. I have a job tonight I'm heading to right now. I'll be staying up until the morning. Yikes. I need you at Sterly extra early so I can sleep before my next outing. Clear. What time? I'll call you in the morning. Max out your phone volume or whatever it takes. This is important. Do you understand? Sorry, megal megalomaniac. You know what? Calling a, a, a kilopede a megalomaniac is kinda cool. But calling it Jack, it's also just kind of funny. <laughs> and he... Yeah, Jack has been posting a lot. I'm sorry. Next time... Next time you can be... Uh, the stream pet, I guess. <laughs> next time. Yeah, I always take things seriously. But could you maybe tell me what is this about? Work? Obviously. Words, Surine. Sorry. Okay, gotta go. Volume loud. Got it. There's something fun about naming a tiny bug Mega. You're absolutely right, Pukey. Next time, it should be Megalomaniac Von Satan. <laughs> That's awesome. Have a safe night. I don't know if we have a... I'll make this quick. Okay, we... We take a bath. I don't really have enough characters to name it. Megalomaniac von Seinen. <sighs> Water. A side spec that can use a pill gun and who loses her cool around liabilities. What a joke. Why I even sign up? To make a difference? Can't help but feel like I brought Yuffie into danger. If I can get over my fears, will I really be able to help her if she needs me? Am I a coward for expecting her to do all the dirty work? I wonder if I've always been so risk adverse. And if not, then what happened to me? That's enough soap. After scrubbing herself, Surine brought an end to her quick back. <laughs> yeah. Yawn, time for sleep. Mm, okay, yeah, time for sleep. Surina gets in bed. Surina tosses in her sleep and falls into a dream. Who are you? 
an unstoppable force. Let's test that. Let's... Hmm? Did we wake up? What's this? Surini wakes up with a loud gasp. <laughs> she grasps her heart, it's beating something fierce. What? Hello? Something's wrong. But I can tell what. I... I shouldn't be here. Is this really my room? It does look different. Something's not right, I, I need to go. I, I can't move. I'm stuck. Am I caught in a dream? Hello? What's happening? Can someone help me? I, I can't move my mouth. Shall we bond with her? Yes. Yes, she's the one. Are we aligned? We're misaligned. I'm splicing anyway. No. I am. It doesn't matter. I can't, I won't. That's not why I came. Who, who the hell are you? Surine? Uh, I'm getting the voice mixed up. I'm sorry, but No, I won't do that to her. Stop it, please. It's ugly, but I have to do it for everyone. What am I doing saving everyone? Stop. Stop. Make it stop. I have to. I can't do it. Yes. Yes, Surine. I can tell you how happy I am right now. I'm so happy I could puke. She's almost a perfect match, too. Surina, this, this is a problem. I can't protect her. Tell not the other retainer. I love you. You already know what to do. I'm sorry I lost my way. But how can I find it once more? If I can tell under from over. If I can tell right from wrong. But you always knew. Didn't you? That's why you came. And that's why you will come again, Surine. <gasps> Am I actually awake? Thanks for playing, you have completed disc zero of Throw Up Club and taken your first few steps in Surine's shoes. The journey ahead will be dangerous and full of twists, turns and revelations. So please, keep your eye out for the Disc 1 release or join my community on Discord. If you are an artist with a fitting style, dedication and an interest in properly illustrating the world of Draw Up Club and its characters, please contact me. Hurrah! We finished it! What a journey! Even if we uh, missed like... 3 fourths of all of the available com content, probably. Winners of the Champions League, says Jack. Ah, oh, what a great, great game. Really, the world building is amazing. It really is great. Once you start uh, aligning what everything means, um, who is what, you know, the factions, uh, the, the roles, the wards, um, the differences in biology and in technology, it really clicks, it's, it's really fun, it's a whole aesthetic in and of itself, I really really like it. And yeah, likewise I cannot wait to see the game fully finished, so if anyone else is watching in the future or whatever, please uh, check out Throw Up Club and all of the future releases. But well, it's 11.30pm my time, so it's time we and this stream. Thank you for coming along. It was really really fun. Um, Puki and Lolrats, the developers, uh, they're great. Join the Discord, check them out. Thank you, thank you for being here. It means a lot uh, the fact that you came over here to watch and spend your evening. And to everyone else, thank you. It's always an honor to 
have you spend your, your time with me to allow me to be your entertainer. Um, He's almost the only YouTuber who manages to get the devs in his games. <laughs> yes, yeah, that that's uh, two in a row. Uh, dissolution and a uh, drop club. But, well, good night. Uh, everybody rest up. Tomorrow we are gonna play Psychopump. Um, I'm guess tomorrow I, I think I'm gonna be able to stream a bit earlier. So, um, yeah. We, we'll see, it's gonna be a horror game, and I'm a very, very jumpy motherfucker, so it's bound to be interesting. For now, have a wonderful night, and take a rest. I'll be seeing you tomorrow.